At this point, I thought it was probably worth inserting a video on something that to me seems obvious, but I think for a beginner programmer, it's not necessarily obvious by any means. So supposing you've got a loop or some other construct, like an if statement. Let's use a loop to illustrate this. So I'm going to say for i in range 3, colon. Now we know that we have to indent whatever goes in the body of the loop. The indentation of normally four spaces is what defines whether the lines that we write after this are still part of this loop or not. So if I want to write something here, like just print out the loop variable, then we have to indent it. Otherwise, if I try to write stuff here that's not indented, this is not part of the loop code anymore. In fact, I'm not sure whether it will work. I think my bet is it will work. Let's just try it. Yeah, and we can see that it does print i, so you can still access this loop variable down here outside of the loop. And it just has the variable 2. That's the last variable that it was set to. But this line does not get repeated. Only this line gets repeated. Only this is part of the loop because it's indented. Let's get rid of that. Now, supposing you want to have some other statement within the loop that has its own indentation, like, for example, an if. Let's say if i equals 2, colon. Now, the code that goes in here will get indented by eight spaces. Let's do print i is 2. Because we have to indent this four spaces to say that it's part of this if statement. It's the code block that the if statement applies to. But that itself is already indented four spaces. So this is going to have to be indented a total of eight spaces. And when I hit the return key here, actually, Visual Studio Code automatically puts my cursor in the right place. So a lot, lot of the time, you don't really need to think about this. I have come across professors of computer science who believe you should use an editor as a beginner that helps you as little as possible. And there are some editors I know for a fact, for example, for Java, that seem to put the cursor deliberately in the wrong place even, never mind the right place, or never mind being neutral about it. I personally don't recommend that at all. I think that beginners are better off using the equipment that professionals would use, such as Visual Studio Code. I don't think an unhelpful editor helps beginners at all in my experience. You're better off trying to make the learning experience as smooth as possible using professional tools and getting used to them rather than using some kind of tool for beginners or some sort of thing that's not intended for programmers like Windows Notepad or something. I don't agree with that philosophy, but each to their own. Anyway, the main point of this video is just that you can end up needing multiple indents if you've got constructs within constructs. Once you start to get to the point where you've got constructs like this, indented constructs within constructs within constructs. So if, for example, I had a, a for loop that was part of this if block or another if within this if, well, you can do that. But once you get up to three levels of indent, you should probably start thinking about restructuring your code using typically functions or methods which we're going to look at later on. And certainly, I would say probably if you get up to four levels of indent, that's just probably too much and the code probably needs rewriting. However, there may be exceptions to that. It depends exactly what you're doing. The aim is always to write clear, elegant code. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.